Hello everyone and welcome back to our SAP CAPM tutorial series. In part 7, we added delete functionality using fragments. Today, in part 8, we will enhance our CAPM app further by adding the update feature. Users will now be able to update existing book records through an action sheet fragment and a dynamic edit panel. First, let's update our action sheet fragment to include the edit button. This adds an edit action alongside view and delete in fragment. Let's go and check it by starting our CDS server. If you click on the action button, you can see that our edit option is visible. Now we have to implement the own edit press function that is triggered when a user clicks the edit button inside the action sheet fragment. This function should serve two important purposes. First one is navigate the user to the update form, that is panel 3 which we are going to create. Then prefill the form fields with the selected book data. First, we will extract the selected books data using this dot or selected content dot get object function. This gives us the details of the row the user clicked edit on. Also, don't forget to import the message toast package to our code. If you check the output window, you can see a toast message showing the ID of the click draw. Now add a panel 3 in our view.xml file by copying our panel 1 code and changing the IDs of the new panel. I have added update word with all the old IDs. For example, the ID title is renamed to update title. After that, show the update panel using on edit book press function which makes panel 3 visible by hiding all other panels. Next. We prepare a filter on the books entity using the selected books ID. This filter ensures we only fetch data for the specific book being edited. Now use request context to asynchronously fetch the list of matching contacts based on the filter applied. For the matching book context, we extract objects and then set all the corresponding fields in the update panel that is title update, author update, etc. with the existing book data. Also, add error handling to check if the book is not found or if the fetch fails, appropriate error messages should be displayed using message box. At last, we need to import filter packages to our code. Before seeing the output, let's make little adjustments in our code to make it error free. After making the adjustments, let's see our output. As you can see that all the input fields are populated with existing values. This logic gives a pre-filled and smooth editing experience to the user. It ensures the application always pulls fresh data from the backend before allowing modifications. Now let's change the submit button function name to update item and implement the logic.
After the user has made changes in the update form, this function handles sending the updated book details back to the CAPM database through the OData version 4 service. The update item method is triggered when the user clicks the submit button in the update panel. In the beginning of this function, we will collect the updated values from all the input fields. Build the OData path dynamically using the item code. For example, if the ID is 301, then the path becomes slash book 301. Then using binding context, we get the context object for this particular book, which lets us manipulate properties directly. Here comes an issue, that is, we haven't created an input field having ID as item code for fetching the ID of the selected item. So let's add another input tag in our view.xml. If you want to hide this new input box from users, then use the attribute visible having value as false. Add some code to set the view to a busy state providing visual feedback that something is being processed. Once the update is done, whether successful or failed, we reset the busy state to enable UI interaction again. After that, go to the JavaScript and set the binding properties for each column. This modifies the local model instance but does not yet persist the changes to the backend. We will use submit batch function to send the changes to the backend in batch mode. This ensures efficient and transactional updates. Also add proper error handling and busy indicators. It gives a professional and responsive user experience. As the last step, update the value of item code input box which was added newly. Let's test the flow by clicking on the three dots on any book row. Choose edit, update the fields and hit submit. Then check if the change reflects. Watch the success pop up and the updated value in the table. In our case, it won't reflect in the table unless we refresh the page since we have not added any refresh button or auto refresh option. So let's refresh our page and see the output in the table. Now you can see that the value is reflected in the table. You can do further editing by doing this process again. We will change Jijoy to Jijoy01 and change all these values and hit the submit button. and item details updated successfully. Now refresh the page to see the output. Now we can see that all the items in that draw got changed. And that's it for part 8. We have now got full update functionality in our SAP Fiery app using CAPM and OData version 4. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay updated. Catch you in part 9 where we will implement more features to make our app even more dynamic. See you there.